Hello and welcome to the first episode for the main slate NFL season week one. We are here. We're going to be breaking it down. So we do have some differences between DraftKings and FanDuel to go over. Uh, FanDuel, there's 12 games. Or sorry, DraftKings, there's 12 games. FanDuel, there's 13. FanDuel has the night game in the main slate, which DraftKings does not. We will do our best to go over all of the games, including that night uh, for the FanDuel. Talk about them briefly. Uh, also, want to bring up, if you are on FanDuel and you are unaware, they added bonuses to their scoring, like DraftKings. It is still half point PPR versus full point, but they have the 300-yard bonus for passing and 100-yard for receiving or uh, rushing or both. So just make sure you know that now we got a big season ahead of us. Let's do our best to uh, see what we can uncover this week and get some takedowns. Now, before we get into it, come join us. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do. The props, the DFS, the best ball, you get it all. One low price. Now let's get into this slate. We got a big one. Uh, this season, I'm going to just try and go over the high owned at you know all the positions quarterback through tight end uh defense i mean it's just so such a roll of the dice that i'm gonna just kind of skip it uh i'll touch on the high owned ones and then every week it's the same thing i'm paying down on defense it's so rare that i'm gonna pay up so i'm rolling the dice with one of the uh lower owned ones so just so you know, that's how we're going to do it. Now, getting into quarterback for week one on DraftKings, highest owned is Baker Mayfield. Now, I like this game. Uh, Baker is super cheap, so I understand why he's going, why people are going there. He has a great alert score, five-star alert score. Washington defense is terrible. Baker has all the same weapons that he had last year. We saw a few games with big-time upside. So I think there's a lot of reasons to go here, and I don't mind if you do. Uh, I like him, but I also struggle to pay uh, the highest ownership for him. I'm definitely going to have some of him, but I think I would rather go to the other side of the matchup and take Jaden Daniels, which is also my first pivot quarterback of the day. Uh, I like Jaden. I think he's in an interesting spot. The Bucks defense isn't good. However... Uh, Vita Vey is back and healthy, so their run defense should be very solid again, which means they're once again a pass funnel D. So I like Jaden Daniels. I think McLaurin is going to get a ton of targets. Noah Brown is still probably working back into the system, and it will only be used situationally, My uh, I would expect. So they're going to be slim. It's going to be a slim target tree. There is... Uh, McLaurin, there's the tight ends, either Ertz or Sanat, and then Eckler. After that, you have Diami Brown, who I think is interesting if you really want to go, you know, go way down on uh, value there. Or uh, Luke McCaffrey, which they've said isn't really up to speed yet. So I think the Washington Commanders are an interesting way to go. We know where the ball is likely going. If Jaden does well, he's going to have rushing upside as well as uh, passing. So I think he is an interesting spot to go week one. And I'd rather go to him now before everybody's on him than later when they might be. All right, ne our next highest zone, we got Anthony Richardson. I think Anthony Richardson is fine. I don't mind if you go here. There is obviously upside due to his rushing, and that can happen I, you know, multiple ways. So I'm fine going here. I don't absolutely love the spot. However, it is one of the higher game totals of uh, the day. And if he has to rush a little bit more because they're down and he's scrambling, it only means more fantasy points to him. Uh, the other thing, Josh Downs is out. So another spot where the target tree is a little bit thinner. I mean, you got Pittman, 
you got a rookie, you got Alec Pierce, and then they're also a little thin at tight end, so you can go there as well. One thing with Richardson and kind of Daniels, I don't think you need to double stack him. I think you can just go with one on uh, them. Now, uh, so I like that. Next, we got Trevor Lawrence. Now, this one I think is interesting. So there's huge home road splits between when it's in Miami and warm. It's going to be warm on Sunday. So that doesn't look great for Trevor Lawrence. However, I do got to bring up the fact that Miami generally comes out firing and comes out fast, especially early in the season. It's happened for a couple years now. So what if Miami gets out to a quick 14, 17, nothing lead or something like that. And then the rest of the game, Trevor Lawrence is throwing for that reason. I'm pretty interested in Lawrence and he's definitely going to be one of the guys I am interested in. The other thing is his stack partners are relatively cheap. So the price of the whole stack is fairly cheap. And then you can bring it back with an a chain or a, or a hill uh, somebody with major upside, uh, you know, if that game just goes nuclear, like say the Baltimore and Miami game did years ago. So I think there's a lot of different ways to go. I'm very much intrigued on uh, Lawrence, but I do have my reservations a little bit just because of Miami being so much better at home. I do worry if, uh, you know, those splits come up again. Geno Smith, I think, is interesting. 5,500, he's cheap enough. My only thing is I just think this uh, over-under at 41.5 is just too low for me to really want to go there. Quarterback is a little different where you really need 25-plus out of whoever you get, and I think it's going to be hard for him to get 25-plus in this spot versus Denver. So probably not really going there as well. Now, uh, Josh Allen, I do expect to be a little higher owned than 11%, but he is absolutely one of my best or one of my favorite plays. Simply put, Arizona is awful on defense. Their offense also has got a little bit better. So maybe they can stay into this game a little bit more. And Josh Allen, since he took that, uh, or got the new OC, he crushed it at the last or at the back end of last year. And I mean, it's hard to argue with a Josh Allen pick. All right. Now it's uh, a little more pivot time here. So we talked about Jaden. The other one, I like Kyler. I, I think he could be throwing a lot another year removed from his ACL injury. So I think we're going to see a little bit more of his rushing upside again. And he got new weapons to play with. So I, I don't mind going with some Kyler Murray in this spot at a lower owned spot. Another one, and this is strictly for DraftKings because on FanDuel he is too high owned, but I kind of like Justin Herbert. Yes, they are going to run the ball more, but their running backs aren't that great or coming back from a significant injury. So there is a chance that they struggle a little bit rushing the ball and they have a very, very good quarterback in Justin Herbert. You also have stack partners that are very cheap. So you could have a super cheap uh, stack with the bring back from the Raiders and then just have absolutely you know, studs for the rest of your lineup. I think it's a little interesting play. Also, if you look at what he's done against the Raiders, two 30-point games, a lot of mid-30s at fi- or mid-20s. At 5,800, you could do worse than that. And you have Josh Palmer and McConkie there, uh, both of which I think are a great value play. So I think that is a very interesting one to go to. And that'll kind of round out our DraftKings quarterback. Uh, Now let's check over, get over to FanDuel and see what we got here. So our high owned on FanDuel, we got Josh Allen, obviously very interested in him and willing to go there Matthew Stafford so this is the Detroit and uh, Rams game I love this game 52 point over under highest of the week and I think you're going to need pieces of this game I don't mind going to Matthew Stafford you got Puka who is totally off the injury report a healthy Cooper Cup 
Uh, so definite good, solid stacking partners. Higby's out, so the target tree is even smaller. Definitely reasons to want to go to uh, Stafford. With that being said, I think Goff on the other side is also in a very good spot. My only worry about Goff is that I do think the Rams may be able, or you might be able to run against the Rams a bit this year. And if that is the case, you're going to get a ton of David Montgomery and Jamar Gibbs, both of which I think are in a good spot, by the way. Um, so I, I love this game and I want pieces of it, whether that be, you know, quarterback stacks or running backs. Time will tell with my lineups, but I am absolutely going to get pieces of this game on FanDuel. It is a big one that we definitely need part of. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, we talked about. Jaden Daniels also talked about. Uh, Tua, we didn't. He is still one of the higher ones, but I do like this game environment. And Tua starts hot every single year. Uh, his biggest games have been in the first half of the season for the last couple of years. This is an interesting one. They could come out firing right away. And if Jacksonville is able to keep into the game a little bit, then you may need pieces of this game. And two is going to be a little bit interesting. I do like him more on FanDuel. I think his price on FanDuel is better than it is on DraftKings. So that, uh, that is that. And uh, the one thing I also want to say about FanDuel is just it's harder to go down to the value quarterbacks here and when i'm saying value i'm saying guys like sam darnold like 6700 to go to sam darnold versus 7k to pay for daniels it's just a no-brainer not to go to darnold darnold might be usable on uh draft kings it's it's a good matchup he's super cheap so i i didn't say that on draft kings but i am a little bit intrigued there so get back over to DK and let's look at what we got for our running back. So our highest owned running back is Bajan Robinson. He is 29% owned. He's 7,700. Bajan is absolutely great. I can't say anything bad against him. The one thing I do have to say is Pittsburgh defense is totally different with TJ Watt healthy and he's healthy. So for that reason, I don't really love going to a super high owned Bajan, but the guy is going to get it done. He is spectacular, and he can do it catching the ball or uh, rushing. And with that being said, I don't mind if, you know, stacking him with a Kirk Cousins just because he is so explosive with uh, catching the ball. Next, Rashad White, 6,300. This is a game that I like a lot, 42.5 over under, I think is low. I think this one's going 45 plus. Um, and so I'm definitely interested in this game as a whole. Washington defense is bad. You were able to run all over them last year, and I don't think that's going to be that much of a different uh, situation this year, so I'm very much into Rashad White, especially early in the season. You don't have much a, of a worry with uh, Bucky Irving, you know, spelling him and taking large portions of his workload and that was the thing with him last year is that he was just on the field always and he's a good pass back catching back so it gives you a nice little floor there with a little bit of a ceiling next we got kenneth walker i like this spot for kenneth walker i think seattle is going to run a ton in this game and i'm definitely willing to take some shots of kenneth walker i think that his price point starting the year is just a little bit low and i think he's probably going to be uh, 7k back you know within a couple weeks next we got Javante Williams so he was a little bit lower owned earlier uh, today he was going to be one of my pivots but now he looks like he is moderately owned I'm absolutely interested in here uh, I think about how Denver is going to win this game with a rookie quarterback and all that, and I think they're going to have to rely on running the ball a little bit to win. And that would mean Javante is getting some success. We saw at the end of the year or second half of the year, he started to show some flashes after he came back from his ACL. Now he's another year removed. I, uh, I think he's going to be good to go from the start, and I don't mind going with some Javante Williams. Uh, Jaleel McLaughlin is going to spell him. He's going to get some work, but I think it's going to be largely the uh, Javante show. 
So I'm fine going with him at 5,500. And another thing is there's just not that many running backs that are going to be workhorses, which leads me to my next point, Jamara White. He is one of the few that is going to be a workhorse. I don't mind going here. Simply for the fact that uh, it's expected that he's going to get, you know, 20, 20 plus touches every week. He did the last four weeks and did well with that. Does that continue? Uh, I would expect it, but it isn't for sure. If he is high owned, I'm going to be pulling back from him because the game total is 39 here. I don't love the game total, but I'm fine having a little bit of white, uh, even with ownership there. Now, Devon Achan, this one I think is super interesting. Uh, it's hard. He's got to be super efficient on his touches. However, they lined him up out wide a few times in preseason. So I think that bodes well for him to be on the field a little bit more than he was last year. But we know there is home run potential. And I think he's an interesting one to throw out. However, I would not go overboard with him. But uh, he has, you know, weak winning upside. All right, now my first pivot, James Conner. I am totally in on James Conner this week. Buffalo Bills allowed 4.6 yards per carry last year. James Conner is going to be the workhorse. And then with Marvin Harrison added, with, you know, Kyler being a little bit more healthy, I think the upside is there for him to really do well. And really, he came on better with Kyler than he was earlier in the season. So I expect that to kind of continue and I'm interested in James Conner. Another one I wanted to talk about was Zach Moss. All right. So Cincinnati Bengals have a lot around them that we're not totally sure what's going on with them so far. One Jamar Chase situation. We still don't know if he's playing T Higgins is now doubtful. So, they're going to have to rely a little bit more on the running game. Uh, If Chase is out, they're going to have to rely on him way more, which makes me a little more scared from him in this game environment all. But just with T. Higgins out alone, I think this is much more interesting. There's been a lot of talk about this being a timeshare, but I think it's going to be more 60% Moss, 40% chase brown and i think moss is getting the goal line work this is a job that mix in you know it's allowed mixon to be a top end back for the last few years and i think a lot of that is going to happen for zach moss as well patriots uh also aren't a great offense so there is the chance that uh Bengals just get out early and pound the ball and just walk away with the win and moss getting a lot of work I think Moss is an interesting spot to go to. Next, Jonathan Taylor. We saw Anthony Richard as one of the higher-owned quarterbacks. If you just flip that a little bit, take Jonathan Taylor. Very similar game environment. He's going to get a ton of work, work, and he is leverage on all of those Anthony Richardson uh, lineups. All it takes is him to get in the end zone once or twice instead of Richardson, and you're looking real good. The other thing is we have met 16. Bajan is 16.36. Uh, they're both very similar price. So you're getting a similar projection, but just way less ownership. I think it's an interesting way to go and just give you a different, you know, change on that. Uh, the other one it might make you puke a little bit, but we got to talk about Chub- Chubba Hubbard. The only reason is he walked away with the job last year. This offense should be a little bit upgraded with Deontay Johnson and Bryce Young taking another step forward. All it's going to take is him getting the end zone with his, you know, normal workload, a few targets, all that. I can see it happening. It is gross, but (laughs) he's one of the only cheaper kind of backs that should get a big workload here this week. So I don't hate that if you want to pay down a little bit. Now, getting over to FanDuel. Oops. FanDuel, high old running backs. We got Rashad White, Rashad White, uh, Jerome Ford, 
A-Chan are the three highest. We have not talked about Ford. Ford is expected to get all of the workload. He's going to get a lot. I uh, I do have my worries, though, just because of Dallas is actually pretty good defense. However, they were a lot worse away than they were at home. So I do have a little bit of interest in Ford. However, I'm not going to go overboard on him. Um, he got a ton of the work last last year, and he only had two games that you really needed him for DFS. So am I going to expect that he gets it? you know, all the time or gets it done or that his salary is going to be 7k in a couple weeks. No, none of that. uh, Do I really expect, but he's going to have the opportunity and Dallas is worse away. So a Chan, we talked about white Williams. I think Kyron is a super interesting spot. I like all the running backs in this game and I actually might uh, prefer just paying down to David Montgomery than any of them. I think they're going to lean on Montgomery a lot, especially to close games out. And if the Lions have a decent lead, it could be a huge dose of Montgomery in the back half of the game. So definitely like that. Also, Gibbs is still working back from an injury, although he is supposed to be a full go. Uh, with the muscle injury, they could be just a little more, little more timid to give him a b- big workload and just lean on Demont. So that uh, is an interesting one to me. And obviously, Kyron is a total beast. So don't mind going there. I do expect Kamara to be a little higher owned. Also, just the uh, one, Panthers defense is terrible. Two, they don't really have anybody else to run the ball. They have Tyson, Taysom Hill you know, to run the ball after him. Jamal Williams, while he will be the RB2, he's toast. We saw it last year. He couldn't get much done. So I think it's pretty much the Kamara show. He should get a lot of check downs. And with the check downs, gives him a nice uh, floor as well. All right, getting over to DraftKings again. Look at the wide receivers. Tyree Kill, highest owned. He's an absolute smash spot. I love him. I'm going to have a ton of him. Uh, 29% owned, but who cares? Give me Tyreek Hill. Andre uh, Yoshivas. I think this is a very interesting one. Uh, Burrow talked him up in preseason a lot that he's going to have a big year. He looks great. And now we have a situation that T. Higgins is doubtful. Jamar Chase, 50-50 to play. Don't know what's going on there. Yoshivas is the one or the two this week. And he's only 3K. He's versus a defense in the Patriots that are, you know, decent, but no longer a Bill Belichick. Uh, so I think it's an interesting play. He is super high owned. I get it. My one thing here is what are the chances of him giving you a, a score that you have to have? And I don't know if that's that high. And that, that's my only worry. But he's a great value, and I don't mind going there. DK Metcalf, dude is an absolute beast. Time to time gives you big winners. But he is against Patrick Sertan, who is a very good corner. And he didn't fare all that great against last time. So I don't mind going here. uh, But definitely not one of the guys I'm trying to get more of. Malik Neighbors. Guy is a absolute freak. Um, Don't mind it. My own one worry is Daniel Jones. Now, this is a great spot for him, and I would expect neighbors to end up being a 7K guy later in the season, so I'm definitely interested. Don't mind the higher ownership here a little bit. We'll have some. Tank Dell, uh, I think Houston's a little bit more in, uh, a little interesting. However, I do favor Nico Collins a little bit more in this game. One of the things... Last season, he faced the Colts twice. He put up 31 and 38. He has been better in dorm in domes. That indie defense does not scare me. I think Nico Collins, if you're going to play one of those guys, is the guy that I'm most interested in. So that is also one of my pivots. Uh, next, we got Chris Godwin, 5,800. 
I like that game. I'm fine with going Godwin. I also like Evans. Either of those will absolutely work. Lad McConkey. Uh, I love Lad in this spot. You have a situation where Palmer, although he's going to play, was added to the injury report late. DJ Chark is out. Uh, so they're going to be... Oh, they also released Parham. Don't have Everett anymore. Obviously, Keenan and Mike Williams are gone. I think McConkey is going to be set for a big workload at 4,700 versus a defense that isn't that great. I think you have safety here at 4,700, and he could give you a decent floor. Josh Palmer is also very interesting. I like both of them. And just due to the pricing of this game, I'm going to get some of this game. Uh, the total's low, but... I think one there's you know smaller target trees for eat for both teams. I think there is some interest in this game for that reason, and definitely in Lad McConkey. He's going to be a guy I have a lot of. CD Lamb. My big worry here is that he just signed, just getting back to work. Now he's so good that none of that probably really even matters. Um, but it's not a great spot for him versus Cleveland, who has a pretty solid defense. Roma Dudenze is going to get uh, probably pretty chalky, being that he is 4K. Keenan Allen is questionable, so you got to uh, worry about that a little bit. And that uh, Tennessee offense or defense has been terrible the last few years against wide receivers. So he's a little bit interesting. I wouldn't go overboard. I just... If he gets super high owner high owned, I just worry about uh, him actually having a slate breaking game. All right, let's talk about more of my pivots now. Uh, one of them is right here. George Pickens. I think Pickens very interesting. I do expect Falcons to have a better defense uh, than they have in the past, but Pickens has absolutely crushed when it's you know, Ben with Deontay Johnson, Ben without Deontay Johnson. And the fact that he has, you know, three games that would have just straight up won you a GPP and he's only 5,700, I got to look at it a little bit. Uh, the other thing, Russell Wilson is questionable. And I have seen some reports saying that he's probably not going to play and it's going to be Justin Fields. If that's the case. I, I'm even more interested in Pickens. It seemed like they had a nice uh, rapport, and I just like the upside of the offense more with Fields than I do with Wilson. Wilson, you know what we're going to get. We're going to run the ball a ton. They're going to protect it, and that's that. I don't think Wilson's going to make the offense better. Fields is going to give mis mistakes, and he's going to lose you games, but he can also win you some games. So, that's uh, the, t the difference there. But either way, I am a little bit interested in Pickens. Uh, Kahil Shakir, super interested in. I think that uh, he's going to end up profiling or working pretty much as the WR1 for the Bills. I like Curtis Samuel also. And I think Keon Coleman is going to be a little slow to come on. He's going to probably play a decent amount. But... Uh, wouldn't be surprised if he's not much of a factor in this first game. Uh, next, I wanted to talk about good old uh, Justin Jefferson. He's all the way down here. Nobody wants to go to him, but he's in a good spot versus the Giants. Uh, we saw last year with Nick Mullins and random quarterbacks here and there, he was able to have those spike weeks. And I still think he can do that with Sam Darnold, especially when they've been practicing for months, where as that end of the season stretch, I mean, guys were thrown in a couple days before and doing all right. So I think Justin Jefferson is super interesting when he's going at 4% uh, owned right now. So definitely in on Jefferson. Talked about McConkey and Palmer. Both of them are interesting Two more I want to talk about. We'll talk. We'll start with Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams has crushed the Chargers a few times. 2022, put up 33 and 41. Last year, put up 27 versus them at the end of the year. 
while this Chargers defense is going to look different than it has in the past, I think Adams can get over on him. And I think there is a chance that this game goes over the total that we're looking at. Most of the games have. They've been the mid-40 range. We'll throw out this uh, 84 because that's not going to happen. But, you know, they've been closer to that mid-40 range. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's where we end up with this game as well. And Devontae Adams is just too good of a receiver in a decent spot to be getting no ownership. And last but not least, where is he? Jackson Smith Najigba. Uh, Tyler Lockett is added to the injury report. He is questionable now. He doesn't play, and JSN is 4,900. Give me a lot of JSN. The old OC just wasn't using him right. There was a interview with JSN over the off season that, you know, they were, the reporter was asking him what he thinks about, you know, having his uh, OC gone and the new one coming in. And he pretty much said that he's so excited about this new offense. He's going to be used in different ways and used more to his strengths and pretty much said good riddance to his other OC and good luck to, you know, the new offense that has him. So I think J JSN is going under the radar and I'm very interested in him to take another leap forward. He had a solid rookie season, but just got it so, uh, you know, downplayed because of some of the other guys that had breakouts there. So uh, let's get over to FanDuel real quick and check the ownership there. We got Cooper Cup. Obviously, that game is super interesting. Rams, Lions, love Amon Ra St. Brown. On FanDuel, Amon Ra or uh, Tyreek will probably be on every one of my lineups. I think both of them are in just an insane spot. Uh, Cooper Cup, him or Puka, one of them is going to have a game, and it's usually not both. It's usually just one. So... One of the two, I think, is super interesting in pretty much all Detroit Lions stacks and don't mind going there. Uh, Josh Palmer is here a little bit. Josh Palmer, when he's worked as a two or a one, has pretty much always done decently. You know, not uh, hasn't necessarily been a world beater or anything like that, but at 5K, you could do worse. He is going to operate as the one. We're not totally sure how many uh, snaps McConkie is going to play, but I do know that uh, Palmer is going to be out there a ton. So definitely interested there. Adams at higher ownership here on FanDuel. I'm not quite as intrigued by him here. Justin Jefferson is still low owned here, by the way. All right, now let's get over to tight end and try and wrap this up quickly. Here are high-owned tight ends, Kyle Pitts, Jake Ferguson, Dalton Kincaid. Uh, I got to warn you with Pitts, he did have some sort of uh, muscle injury. He was limited the last couple, uh, last week. He's going to play, but some cause for concern there. Outside of that, I think he's fine, and I'm probably going to have some. Jake Ferguson is a guy that I'm very excited about this week. With Lamb out, maybe Lamb isn't quite conditioned enough for uh, football. I mean, I'm sure he's, you know, just insanely talented, so he'll probably be fine regardless. But Ferguson's kind of the number two on this team, so I'm a little bit interested with him if Lamb takes any snaps off or anything like that. Dalton Kincaid is an interesting one with all the movement in the bills. And we've seen big target shares going his way. Can he get it done? Absolutely. Definitely a little interested there. Uh, Granson is probably going to get some work. They are thin at tight end for the Colts and no downs. So that middle part of the field uh, tight ends are going to roam and Granson becomes a little interesting. Evan Ingram, it's going to be him or Kirk. It's probably not going to be both. So I, uh, definitely a little intrigued there. And John, is super cheap for his athletic ability. And I am a little bit intrigued by him just because the fact that McDaniels is so good at scheming his pass catchers into open space. 
He's got big time speed, so I am interested. I do have to say, however, tight ends have never really been that much of a thing for Miami. So I probably wouldn't go overboard, but I don't mind having him in a few uh, lineups here. And the one pivot that I kind of like is Kate Otten. I think Kate Otten's pretty interesting. He came on in the playoffs, was getting a ton of targets in the playoffs, and I wouldn't be that surprised if kind of continued into this year because Baker just, you know, found to trust him and came up. He's also now into his third season, so I think there's a time where if we're going to see a little bit of a Kate Otten uh, breakout, I think it's now. He's a guy I targeted a ton in best ball, and I'm definitely interested interested in him now. Um Noah Fant also. Denver hasn't been good versus tight ends for years now. This offense should be a little faster paced. They're going to play a little more, you know, a few more snaps. And uh, they got rid of their other tight ends. Fant is actually going to run a lot of routes, play a lot, and I have some interest because of that. He's also always been a pretty solid player in, you know, analytics and has forecasted like he should be really good, just hasn't actually came out. Chativian Sanders, we got to bring up. Uh, he was expected to be splitting time with Tommy Tremble and Ian Thomas. Both of them are out this week. It's likely going to be his show. He's minimum priced. I think you got to consider it at that price. Checking over FanDuel. The high-owned guys we got here, Evan Ingram, Dalton Kincaid, Kyle Pitts, pretty much the same situation. I got to say that I like Ferguson a lot more over here. Uh, definitely interest in Fant and Laporta. Brock Bowers, I'm glad that was up here. I forgot to talk about him on DK. He's only 4,500 on DK. We know the type of athlete he is and the type of tight end he was in college. He led the... Alabama. I mean, Alabama is an incredible school and led them in receiving. So I think you have to uh, consider taking some shots on Brock Bowers. And that's definitely one of the one-offs that I would consider or uh, pivots. And lastly, getting over to DraftKings, just to check out the high owned. We got the Bears, the Bills, the Saints. Saints, I really do like the spot they're in. But 3700 for them is going to be hard for me to pay. Bills, Bears, I'm fine going there. The Bills are versus a pretty solid offense, though, so that scares me. But I don't mind picking on uh, Tennessee Titans with the Bears. Will Levis, the quarterback, they're going to throw a lot. Just gives more chances for interceptions. Um, Bengals are fine. Pretty much, I'm just paying down and hoping there. Uh, fan duel, high owned defenses. We got the Giants, Saints, and Bears. I am probably not going to the Giants. However, it is Sam Darnold. We know he's not that good, so I don't mind maybe sprinkling in some Giants there. But all in all, that'll do it for us today. Week one is here. Good luck, guys. We will be back next week. Let's make some money. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the video. Helps us a ton, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.